Good morning, everyone. I'm Evan Boyle, and uh, I'm here to talk to you about the Diversity in Science Lecture Series, uh, which uh, I helped co-found. <clears throat> and uh, we have many brilliant organizers. Uh, there's just three of us here today to give you a taste of what we've accomplished and how we hope you'll uh, join us. So first question, what are the diversity in science lectures? And uh, in, a, in a nutshell, the Dazzle, is, as we call it, is a platform for life science trainees to share their research and comment on equity, diversity, and inclusion in STEM. This is our main goal. We want to hear all this amazing work that people in San Diego and beyond are doing. Uh, but we also want to hear all the important insight that they have to these issues that matter to them so much. It's operated by multiple institutions in San Diego. We have organizers from uh, UC San Diego, from Sanford Vernon Prebus, the Salk Institute, and we have input from many others in uh, San Diego like SDSU and Scripps Research. But we also have partner universities from across the United States. Uh, we have organizers helping run events at Vanderbilt University, University of Utah, Massachusetts General Hospital, Emory, and UCLA. And it's been a great privilege to work with these people uh, on these topics that matter so much to all of us. And in our events, in our programming, we really want to stick by these three key words. That's, that's what you have to know. We want it to be instructive, gracious, and joyful. Uh, we want to have a positive, welcoming environment where we can have a collegial conversation and, and just learn a lot. And so I really hope that all of our events meet those standards uh, and, and make a positive impact on uh, research in the life sciences. So here's an overview of Dazzle uh, in our first year. We started in June of 2020. We very quickly started organizing multiple departments, including my supervisor, Professor Jean Yeo at UCSD. We assembled an executive team. We made some announcements within a month and uh, finally started hosting sessions of Dazzle uh, that, same, that same month in June of 2020. Since then, we've started other initiatives. We've tried to help launch a book club, uh, <clears throat> hosting speakers outside of UCSD. I was really proud of uh, our annual symposium that we started in November of, uh, or October, excuse me, of 2020, and uh, later had our second symposium more recently in, in November of 2021. We uh, started our partner initiative also in, in 2021. And, uh, you know, I, I think we had an amazing first year hosting weekly lectures by life science trainees and other uh, junior life scientists and experts in equity, diversity, and inclusion. Currently, Dazzle has uh, nearly 400 subscribers. If you all today newly subscribed we would we would get it we'd get there we're at around 398 right now uh here's the trend over our first year of people signing up we had a lot of enthusiasm at the beginning and we've consistently added more uh subscribers to our mailing list you get our links to all of our events on zoom and hopefully in the future in person uh programming as well um <clears throat> And I'm just really uh, grateful and proud of all of our junior life scientists that we featured in Dazzle. Most of our speakers are graduate students, uh, at UC, not just at UCSD, but uh, as I said, in other San Diego institutions. And even um, last spring, we hosted uh, graduate students from other universities. We also feature postdoctoral scholars uh, and, and get to have even more uh, research um, that, you know, as, as a major region of uh, high level research in um, life sciences in the United States. 
We've also had some assistant professors and again, other experts in equity, diversity, and inclusion. And I'm also very proud that uh, we have succeeded in facilitating uh, visibility of women scientists. I've went through the speakers uh, at Dazzle and uh, looked at how, uh, what fraction of them were women and compared that to UCSD more broadly. And uh, whether you're comparing against graduate students or postdoctoral scholars, we definitely have uh, more representation of women. And I think that speaks to how uh, courageous and motivated they are to participate in this experiment that we formed together. Uh, and I, you know, I'm really glad to hear their stories. So on that note, I uh, want to talk a little bit about what happens at Dazzle. What do Dazzle speakers discuss uh, beyond their amazing life science research? And this is a big summary that I will uh, examine in more detail in the coming slides uh, using a keyword analysis of the transcripts of Dazzle talks, uh, trying to identify what topics are mentioned in the equity, diversity, and inclusion sections of the talks that we host. So first off, the main result from doing this review was that nearly all Dazzle speakers commented on social and interpersonal factors. So I, I don't think I necessarily expected this going into this big initiative, that these social bonds would be so essential to research and inclusion and productivity in science. But in retrospect, it makes a lot of sense. Where do you learn to be a scientist? How do you learn your techniques? How do you make progress in your career? You need mentors. You need to understand how to navigate higher education, uh, you, you, you know, we're all here having teachers and classmates um, and, and, and um, interacting with new ideas and new diverse people and disciplines. So, you know, it's, it makes a lot of sense that this is the top uh, type of factor that people want to discuss in their talks. And I think, you know, my takeaway personally is that we really have to care about the social bonds and the climate at our research institutions, because if we don't have this welcoming environment uh, where we can depend on these social factors, then we won't be a premier research institution uh, and, and people will not be able to be successful. So uh, next, I looked at the categories of race uh, and different, you know, broken down by types of race, but just an aggregate uh, for speakers who mention race or ethnicity, it comes up to around two thirds of speakers. So I do think that uh, this was perhaps in line with my expectation that these types of conceptions of diversity, this is, you know, very present. And from the very beginning, this is one of the big motivating factors for hosting this initiative. So I think that, uh, you know, this is on the minds of most speakers uh, at Dazzle, <clears throat> but I, I would emphasize that there are other topics and Dazzle and these diversity initiatives in general um, have multiple and perhaps intersecting topics that they care about. And that gets to the other uh, identities that Dazzle speakers wanted to uh, be, wanted to speak on, speak about in their talks. So these other identities might, might only be discussed or mentioned by a minority of speakers, but when they are mentioned, they're often mentioned multiple times, three or more times per talk. And uh, here I have highlighted some of these clusters of talks that address these other minority identities, uh, sexual and gender minorities like L uh, LGBT, topics, what it means to be transgender or, or gay um, in science, immigrant identities. Academia is a very uh, cosmopolitan international you know, enterprise. So this is a very important topic, especially for international postdocs. Uh, what it means to be a woman in science and also um, mental health and, and wellness was a, another big topic. And uh, of course, other, um, you know, there are some smaller topics that have 
received attention even in the second year, including disability um, in science and being from a rural and agricultural background. So I think, you know, these topics are all important and contribute to diversity in science, uh, but it does seem to be perhaps, um, you know, there might be different ways of engaging with this topic or approaching this um, compared to some of the bigger topics like social and interpersonal factors and race and ethnicity. So uh, <clears throat> before we go into um, our conversation, I wanted to uh, say that we did some additional work studying the diversity of our speakers at DASL. And in previous research disciplines in the social sciences, it has um, you know, this, in, this interest in studying the relationship between surnames and uh, kind of ethnic group or nationality group. And uh, because of a complex history at the global scale, groups of nations tend to share certain surnames. And what this means is that you can uh, estimate the uh, representation of these different nation groups from a corpus of, of names. So here's a publication from late last year that mines a lot of authors of scientific papers from PubMed and looks at their uh, nation group representation. And uh, in this paper, they discovered that there were uh, there's an underrepresentation of East Asian surnames amongst keynote, keynote speakers and uh, professional society award winners. So um, this is an imperfect but powerful way to quickly um, learn about the composition of speakers just given uh, surnames. And uh, I came up with a new approach for doing this type of analysis by looking up names directly from this forebearers.io database. And that allows very accurate inference of nationality for the speakers who were not American and were uh, you know, openly had another nationality in their talks and online. Um, what I found was that using this database allowed very accurate um, estimation of groups like 83% uh, accuracy amongst the names that were estimated. There's only one mistake um, for someone who was uh, from Latin America and was assigned to other European uh, nation groups. Uh, and this compares to this uh, long term, long short term memory method and from that publication uh, that was an effective tool, but had many more inaccuracies. So this new database is very powerful. And I can show you um, some of the results uh, from another seminar series, the Fragile Nucleosome seminar series, another virtual community that features speakers. Uh, this seminar series is based in Europe, so they have a lot of European speakers. So I, I'm sure, you know, I, I wouldn't want to say that they don't prioritize equity, diversity, and inclusion, but the central focus of the seminar series is um, on chromatin biology. And uh, so this is the composition of their speakers. Uh, and by comparison, you can see the uh, nation group representation of Dazzle speakers. So you can see that um, we have a lot more speakers from Latin America whose, whose name is assigned to Latin America, Spain, Portugal, and the Philippines. Um, and uh, we have, you know, fewer surnames that are assigned to other um, European, European nation groups. So um, I hope you've been convinced <laughs> that Dazzle has been um, a really positive force uh, highlighting underrepresented and disadvantaged groups in the life sciences. We've uh, put together this roadmap for how to run a virtual seminar series. You can find it on our website under the resources tab at ucsdazzle.com, or you can find a preprint at BioArchive. So if you're looking for ways to organize a virtual community, um, I recommend that you take a look. We have a very thorough supplement that gives you directions on how to do this. And uh, I also invite you to subscribe today to our 
mailing list, you can do that at our website at www.ecsgdazzle.com and click the uh, nominate or subscribe button in the top right. That will lead you to the join us page. And um, with that, we can begin our panel discussion. So uh, Gabrielle Goldberg and Julie Beth Bergato are here. Um, and I'm very excited to uh, have a conversation with them um, briefly. And uh, you know, you, if, if you're so inclined, you can add your questions to the Q&A session or a, a Q&A button or put them in the chat and we'll also take your um, questions. But uh, you know, for now, um, the, the panelists can begin uh, kind of talking about Dazzle. And so our, my first question that uh, I'd like us to tackle is, you know, why, why did we get involved in Dazzle? Uh, Gabby, do you uh, have a, can you speak to what inspired you to get involved? Yeah, um, so hi everyone, my name is Gabriella and I'm a PhD student at UCSD in the biomedical sciences program. So, um, you know, when the pandemic started and we were all at home and there was a lot of social justice work happening around the world um, after the George Floyd's murder, I got, well, before that, I was very much involved in my um, diversity committee of my program, the BMS program. And Alina, she was one of the founders with UEVN. She started the diversity program in my program. And she was like, well, we're all, we're about to start this really cool um, uh, lecture series called Basil, and we need somebody to help, you know? So I was like, I'm, I'm totally gonna do this. And I think for me, the reason why I wanted to do it was because I saw that scientists were being portrayed as robots, you know? Um, so my, I'm the first scientist in my family and my family doesn't really trust science. Um, and it's very much something that we've seen in the media. And my vision of Dazzle was more to, put a human face on scientists and show that we are humans and we have different backgrounds. We have, um, we're not just robots that work in a lab. And I think that we've done a really good job of showing that with Dazzle. Yeah, I mean, I think that's great. Um, <laughs> it is totally a kind of stereotype or, um, common trope that scientists are somehow emotionless or logical automata. So yeah, I, and of course, certainly I have not <laughs> found that to be the case. So yeah, I'm glad that you're, you're willing to combat against that notion. Um, what about you, Jilly? What do you, uh, what motivated you to get involved? Yeah, um, yeah, I guess. Hey, everyone. Um, my name is Jilly. I'm a graduate student in the neuroscience program. And I started um, in Dazzle around the same time as um, Gabriella as well. Um, and similarly to her, you know, someone reached out to me from the program describing kind of the general goal of Dazzle. And I went to one of the first meetings and I was pretty much automatically like, this is awesome. This is a great idea and something that's really needed, um, like right now, this is the perfect time to be having these conversations about EDI. And as Gabby mentioned, um, putting a face to um, these scientists who, you know, are, you know, usually portrayed as robots. Um, and I also really wanted to be a part of the conversation regarding um, like racial injustice and inequality in science. So I think a lot of times, you know, in um, the research arena, we think, oh, you know, we're just looking at things, um, we're not biased, um, you know, we are just looking at the data, um, all that kind of stuff. And I think it's important for us to be having these like difficult conversations, even within the STEM community. Um, so I really wanted to be part of that conversation and see what other people had to say um, and learn from other people's experiences as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely relate to the learning 
<clears throat> from other people's experiences. Um, you know, for me personally, uh, my advisor, Jean, was looking to start some initiative like this uh, back in March or April uh, in, in 2020, or perhaps, you know, even, even before that. And the uh, George Floyd protests were a major catalyst for making this happen and, and going bigger and expanding to many programs beyond systems biology and, and bioinformatics uh, that he was, you know, kind of uh, running the graduate program for. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I, I had decided to get involved in the postdoc association as the vice co-vice chair for equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, and I, I think for me, it was that I was just interested in meeting people and and doing something important and uh, and also high quality, something that would really be impactful uh, to people here at UCSD. Um, so I, I think just the, the way to hear from more people um, since I had started my postdoc uh, the previous fall uh, was really valuable and exciting to me. So I think that is, uh, you know, one of the big reasons why I, I wanted to do something like Dazzle. And, and I think, you know, it's, this can lead into the second question. So, uh, you know, what, what do you like most about Dazzle? And, and I think for me, it's just the ability to empower people to talk about what they care about and that we can we can listen we often have speakers who are unsure what they're supposed to talk about or what's allowed or not allowed or uh what the scope of dazzle is and and really it's anything that our speakers care about that they think is important for other life scientists to know in research um and so that i think is what i like the most um and uh, it, it seems, you know, very novel and, and different for a lot of the uh, graduate students we've hosted who haven't had that kind of visibility and flexibility before. Um, so uh, yeah, what, what do you two think? <laughs> what do you like about Dazzle? <laughs> I guess I would uh, just add, well, I totally agree with you. Like that's definitely one of my favorite things about Dazzle as well is just giving the opportunity and the space for people to talk about things that maybe they weren't or they hadn't been comfortable talking about in like the science field. Um, but one of the other things that I also really like is that we're a group of people from like a lot of different fields in the biological sciences, um, which is also, it makes the talks, you know, maybe a little bit hard, you know, for the speakers to talk to a more broad audience. Um, and the audience, you know, ha is listening to talks maybe outside their fields, but it's, you know, it's a really fun opportunity to just learn about what other people are doing in biology. And um, I just think that's really cool. And that's very different um, than kind of the standard or typical seminar series that are, you know, already in place. Um, usually those are very focused on specific fields um, or topics and, Dazzle being more broad is um, always fun and I'm always learning something new, which is really exciting. Yeah, I have to agree with both of you. Um, uh, but I also really love the fact that a lot of the time our speakers take the opportunity to talk about their journey through science. And so many of us have such different journeys. And not just that, but they talk about what helped them. And I feel like for me, talking to someone who's already been through um, this journey and telling me about the resources that helped them makes it easier for the next generation of scientists to go through this path. They already have the resources in hand and um, they know somebody, they can just email. Most of, you know, we, we share everyone's email. So you can just email someone and say, hey, I just saw your Dazzle talk and you talked about this RU program. I was hoping like maybe, you know, so people reach out and it forms a really good community where we all really help each other. I love that about Dazzle. Yeah, I think, um, you know, another topic I wanted to touch on is what makes Dazzle distinct from other seminars. Uh, so I think 
you know, these are the kinds of things that we're talking about where um, we, there are some formats for hearing about people's journey um, <clears throat> and, and hearing like very, you know, broad, broad science, but I think it is special because uh, this is just very visible and very open to many speakers uh, and, and many disciplines. And furthermore, it's, you know, maybe perhaps this, these topics might be covered in a uh, formal seminar by a very senior professor who uh, feels very comfortable being very open and, and has reached a very, you know, senior secure position in, in their career. But I think, you know, what makes Dazzle um, more different is that it's it's focused on more junior life scientists who, you know, don't necessarily dominate the conversation or might be kind of tackling newer or um, more uh, emerging, uh, yeah, challenges and opportunities, frankly, um, since a lot of our speakers talk about what has helped them. Um, that uh, might might be missing from, um, you know, more senior investigators. Uh, yeah, do you think there's anything else that makes Dazzle kind of special or, or different from, you know, other seminar series? Yeah, um, I love the fact that it's a training opportunity, like you said, for um, early career researchers and graduate students, you know, a lot of us don't have the opportunity to present. And we don't just, you know, as a, as a um, organizer, I know this, but I don't think the attendees know this, but we don't just throw the speakers out there and say, okay, do a talk. We have a practice talk. And that I think is so helpful to get feedback from people like us that have been seeing these seminars for almost two years now um, and know what works, know what doesn't work. And from so many different fields, we help with science communication and just confidence in giving talks. I think that's such a great training opportunity. You don't get that from other seminar series. Yeah, I just want to like totally agree with everything that Gabby just said. Um, the practice sessions are really awesome. And I think it's the Dazzle um, sessions are such a great opportunity to practice science communication as a whole, um, which is something that's like really important for scientists to learn, um, you know, to make, to be able to communicate our research with other scientists as well as people in the um, general public. Um, and I think Dazzle is like great practice for that and a great opportunity to test that out um, and to get feedback from the organizers, um, like Gabby mentioned. Um, so I don't have anything to add, but yeah, just totally agree with that. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's all great. Um, I mean, I, I think it was a really critical decision at the beginning to try to have these dry runs. And I think most of it was that, you know, we were, we're all getting used to Zoom and we'd all started using it because of the, uh, shutdowns, but it was still it was still new. People still hadn't necessarily given their own presentation in Zoom yet. Um, so I, I think it's uh, <clears throat> it's almost a, perhaps a happy accident that <laughs> we we kind of thought that these sessions would be necessary for purely technical reasons. Um, but there's been a lot of other benefits, I think, to to having them. Um, and uh, another topic is, uh, you know, on on what all of our amazing speakers talk about um, is, do you have anything that you feel like you've learned about equity, diversity, and inclusion in STEM that uh, you've you found very striking or important that you know you might not have uh, fully understood without Dazzle? I guess a small point that you kind of already touched on, Evan, during your presentation. Um, but one thing was, so you touched on how social factors and interpersonal relationships and factors were um, brought up frequently during the Dazzle talks. And I think that was something that I didn't necessarily expect at the beginning. Um, I didn't expect uh, like, the speakers to talk about their personal journeys. I thought it was mostly just going to be like 
oh, this is what I'm doing right now as part of my EDI work, which people also talk about, and that's also great, but it was also really interesting to hear people's um, experiences throughout, you know, their childhood, um, undergraduate, graduate training, et cetera. Um, and I just learned a lot about, you know, how these people are, or you know, how these other scientists and my other um, colleagues are, um, have gone through different types of experiences and what they've learned from that and what resources were helpful for them. Um, so that's kind of a general note that I didn't, I also didn't expect and I thought was really, um, really helpful for me to just hear about other people's journeys, I guess. Yeah, I have to agree. I think um, something that I didn't expect to learn were, you know, I expected to to learn about people's journeys and and what influenced them to go into science and what's been difficult and how to fix some of these problems. But what I didn't expect to see were people actively doing research, you know, in these areas. Or for example, I think our first special session was Kiolu and he does um, genomic research for indigenous populations and how to uh, protect these genomes. Um, and these are things that I didn't think about. I, I was striking to me, but these are the types of questions that I think in Dazzle we have to, well, not just in Dazzle, but in the science community, we have to think about. And Dazzle is really doing a, the good work of putting these out there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I, yeah, I did talk about the, you know, my, how I thought about the EDI content in the talks, but um, I guess I do have a couple insights that, you know, how these, the topics that were really meaningful to people <clears throat> uh, and and had really personally affected their their career were um, kind of the the tensions of being biracial and also being from a rural and agricultural background. Um, so I these are things that of course I had been aware of um, and knew were uh, important to people's uh, self image and. Um, you know, off kind of con frequent reminders in their lives. Uh, but I just thought it was really helpful to hear directly from these people um, who could describe, you know, just how how much it had touched their lives and and really changed them on a perhaps you know daily basis. And 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 really, you know, um, affected their um, their confidence and their sense of belonging and, and how that influenced, you know, what they were looking for and what was valuable to them in a scientific community. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, just um, just hearing all of our speakers <laughs> has been really great. Uh, so we'll, we'll touch on one more topic and then we'll move on to the Q&A portion. Um, is, I, I mean, I think, you know, when we were starting out with Dazzle, uh, we didn't quite know what we were doing. And people would ask, well, like, how much should I focus on? And like, what will people ask? And, and how, uh, how, how much should I explain about these different methods that I'm doing? And, and we, uh, you know, at least I would, would tell these prospective speakers like, well, you know, let's see. And, and what do you think? Because <laughs> we weren't quite sure uh, what the best recipe for success would be. Um, so I think, you know, what I have noticed <clears throat> over time is that, you know, this, this process of sort of institutionalizing and having, uh, these, um, common, um, remarks and, and pieces of advice, uh, that we can give people. I, I, I'm really glad that's happened. I feel like it's much easier to, um, to help people and, uh, facilitate really, um, you know, helpful and inclusive talks that all life scientists can understand. So I, I guess I would say um, this process of kind of like having these kind of standards and uh, uh, common advice to give to speakers that has changed. Um, is there anything else that you guys think have, has changed over time? 
A lot. Um, you know, just like you said, we started out, we didn't really know what we were doing. And now we've grown so much. I think it's, we, we've, we've helped start Dazzle and other institutions. And um, our symposium, I think, like you said, was like a highlight um, of everything that we've done. We've been able to get funding for the symposium. We've been able to get funding for Dazzle. Um, and I think, you know, from the beginning, you had, you kind of had, you know, to carry the team on your back and you've done a really good job of, of, uh, delegating. <laughs> I think, uh, I think we're, we're in a good spot now where we have like, you know, good organization and it's, it's been easier to maintain in the long term. Yeah, I don't really have much to add, but definitely I think one of the biggest changes other than just like learning how to not just run the sessions, but you know what everybody doesn't see is what goes on in the background, obviously. And as Gabby mentioned, like Evan has been kind of a critical component of that, um, just, you know, organizing meetings and, and uh, figuring out how to delegate the work and all of that. Um, I also think just the fact that we have been able to expand to other universities has been super exciting. And um, I can't wait to see where all of that goes. I think we have some really awesome organizers at other, you know, at Vanderbilt and UCLA and um, University of Utah, et cetera, I'm missing some, I know. Uh, but they are so um, excited about bringing Dazzle to their universities or something similar to Dazzle. and. Um, they've helped us out so much and it's just been great to see us build that community like even beyond San Diego. I think that's been, I didn't really expect people to be that excited kind of outside of San Diego. And there has been a lot of, um, just a lot of excitement and, and um, people pushing forward. And I, you know, I'm looking forward to where that goes um, in the next, you know, months or years or whatever. So. Yeah, years of dazzle. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so that I think that's, you know, that's going to be the end of our conversation, but we have a question and please do um, enter your uh, questions in the Q&A or you can just put them in the chat if you prefer. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, <clears throat> so uh, our, our, our first question is, uh, let's this. Um, does Dazzle do any work with youth, elementary or middle school levels? I was wondering what you may do or if you have any suggestions for promoting sciences to young learners, especially immigrant youth or English language learners. And, um, you know, this is this is something that we have, a, especially in San Diego, we have a lot of <clears throat> very passionate uh, scientists who engage at this level of education. It's something that, you know, I don't have much experience with <clears throat> myself and I, you know, I do try to keep up with uh, education literature on higher education. Um, and, you know, I have a lot of networks and contacts. Uh, I, I feel like I've really done a lot of um, learning and communicating in, in graduate school and as a postdoc, but uh, I, I have not, um, yeah, I, I don't feel like I, you know, know how to approach this question. Um, so. We have had organizers um, investigate this and, and you know, talk with other groups at UCSD. Um, we don't currently have any, and I, I mean, and I could be wrong, but I don't think we have an active initiative in this area currently. Um, but it is something that you know, we're, we're open to and, and interested in. So uh, yeah, what do you guys think? Yeah, I agree. I think we are more focused towards other scientists really at this point. Um, but because we have so many speakers and so many range, you know, it's a huge range of, of uh, specialties. I remember that we had a speaker um, that I am blanking on his name, but he uh, is one of the directors of CREATE, the uh, the office at UCSD, and he does a lot of work with 
youth, especially in San Diego and um, closer to the border, immigrant youth um, teaching science. So I would check out the CREATE office at UCSD if you wanna look into how to teach science to immigrants and immigrant um, children. Yeah, um, I know that uh, the, the organization I'm most familiar with uh, is called Reality Changers. And a few people in my lab I know have volunteered with that organization and they seem to be quite active. They have um, a great website. Uh, and my, you know, there's actually a Stanford alumni event that I'm going to participate in uh, in cooperation with, <clears throat> with them. So that will be my first experience with them. But I think that that has been a very um, effective and high profile uh, group. So if, if you're looking for uh, volunteering um, uh, opportunities, that, that is the one that comes to mind for me. Yeah, I guess I don't really have anything to add, but I think um, that, yeah, like Evan and Gabriella mentioned that there are a lot of organizations. Um, I'm at SALK currently, and um, there's uh, the SALK Outreach Office um, has, uh, they put together like science talks um, for K through 12. Um, and I think a lot of them have been on Zoom um, during the pandemic, uh, but usually they're in person. And that's also a great opportunity for scientists to practice communicating with younger students. Um, and I think it's something that's super important, but as Gabby mentioned, it's kind of our focus has been primarily on, um, you know, graduate level um, and beyond. Yeah, and I just put the link for the program that I mentioned. Um, and the speaker was Beto Vasquez. I'm sorry that I forgot his name, but there he is. Um, if you want to reach out, you can reach out to him. But he does a lot of uh, events, I think, throughout San Diego, the community in East County and in, this, and in South County, doing like science classes. I remember um, he used to do a class where he would teach the science of tortillas. And so they would make tortillas and learn like food science of why it browns and do all these kids, which is crazy because I didn't learn about this stuff until college. So. Very cool. Okay, well, it doesn't look like there's any more questions. So we'll, we'll give people just a, a minute <laughs> to think uh, just in case they have any burning questions. Um, but I do, you know, I'll, I'll use this opportunity uh, just to say I'm very glad that uh, all of you guys have participated and I, you know, I hope we'll be able to make this available for more people who weren't able to come today. I know a few people have uh, emailed me saying that they wish they could make it, uh, but weren't able to. Um, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm again, I'm very glad we're able to have this conversation. So uh, thanks Jillian and Gabby for um, coming today and, and answering these questions. And of course, for taking on this monumental effort for a year and a half now. <laughs> uh, it's been really great working with you and, and all the other Dazzle organizers. Um, so I, yeah, I guess we can wrap up and uh, yeah, if you have any final comments then um, please share away. <laughs> no, thank you all. And yeah, definitely email, uh, reach out if anybody has any questions or ideas on other initiatives that uh, maybe Dazzle can be a part of. Um, we're very happy to, you know, uh, work with other people in the San Diego area and beyond. So thanks, Evan <laughs> and Gabby. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much, Evan. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you all for coming today. There's no more questions, so we'll uh, we'll end now. Um, but I hope you uh, take a look at Changemaker Week on the UCSD website, and uh, I hope that you enjoyed the session today. And we hope to see you at. Um, at Dazzle, our next session is tomorrow. Um, so you can check our schedule on their website, which I posted in the chat. And uh, have a great rest of your day. Okay, bye everyone. <laughs>